So, um, uh, there was an article I saw on GQ about Virgil Abloh's Patek Philippe, right? I'm not really the biggest watch person. I don't know anything about watches. Don't get me wrong. I don't have any aspirations to get a really nice expensive watch. But this article is pretty interesting about um, how he customizes his watch and who was behind customizing it. Um, I think the only thing I know about Patek Philippe is um, the future song, right? Patek Philippe. Oh, two more sources. That's the only thing I know about um, a, a watch anyway from a rap, rap lyric. But um, yeah, so Virgil's got this particular watch that I think he debuted or he showed when he was showing off something to do with the DJ Jax or something or whatever it may be. And GQ made a good little article about it. Now that I'm going to put up on screen and we're going to go for it. So um, this is the article from GQ magazine. It's called Virgil Abloh's, Virgil Abloh's uh, Abloh Size is One of a Kind Protect Philippe. And it's written by Cam Wall from GQ. And it says the following. Um, Virgil Abloh's story is one of taking pre-existing designs and giving it his own Abloh, Ablonian spin. At one of Virgil's first projects, Pirate Visions, he took a subpar. Okay, so let's skip that. The designer is a perfect collaborator too. Tuning out, turning out glasses, water bottles, sneakers. Vir Abloh can make it. Okay, cool. Let's go. Both Patek Philippe and Virgil's camp de de declined to comment when asked about its origins last week. But over the weekend, I discovered a likely source. Watch customizer Mad Paris. The company's signature style design um, involve dressing watches up in matte black or in black sorry mad paris sprawling instagram features watch after watch that looks like it lost a fight to a squid while mad paris founder behe la rue um coily says over whatsapp i can either confirm or deny we made it for him followed by four smiley emojis he seems to know exactly how abloh's watch was made so this is the watch right that he made like oof, look how nice that looks right so it's entirely blacked out and then if you zoom in closer to it and the Patek Philippe in the inside of it, it's got the infamous quotation marks either side of it. It looks fucking incredible. And again, it's a really um cool watch. I think um interesting maybe movement. Maybe it's just because it's a Virgil thing and he's you know he's 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 uh, he's heavy in the design world, but it'd be interesting to see if like in the future or in you know in, in maybe a couple of years, if the trend steers away from, you know, um what what do they call it? Busting down your watch when you kind of, you know, flood it with diamonds or or whatever it may be called. Um, that'd be interesting to see if it moves away from that and it kind of gets into like you know maybe changing the color maybe you know recasting things like i saw some kid actually recently um who was it i saw a kid on youtube who had that do you know the elix chain with the with the belt buckle and the swoosh and the elix 9 1970 with a dress thing has got in it some kid online on youtube i think got that chain which is i think cast in steel or something and then you got another jeweler to remake the entire chain in sterling silver like insane right so he just got the got the chain and somehow was able to recast all the links and all the elements all the little charms or whatever it may be called on it and redone it i think as well on top of that i think maybe ian connor's got that chain right and he's kind of busted down so i'm assuming they put diamonds all over i'm not sure how they do that um so it'd be cool to see if they kind of steer away from the whole diamonds extreme exuberant flashy things and kind of steer towards the more like you know um bespoke luxury finish because to be honest this looks really expensive it's, there's no gold there's no shiny bits on it but it looks it looks dear right it, it doesn't look like a i don't know you know like one of those watches that people buy when they listen to podcasts i don't know what the names of them are but it doesn't look like any of those right it looks fucking expensive it looks dear as fuck it looks really nice um anyway it continues um the watches are one of a piece coat in coated in diamond like carbon wow Look clear. Look closely into the darkness, and you see a pair of tiny quotation marks around the Protect Philippe logo, right underneath where the twelve o'clock indicator is typically found. Le Rue says the process of blacking this particular watch out took two months. First, we need to buy the watch, which is which I didn't know. I didn't think that was a thing because I, I think a lot of people do that in cust sneaker customization, right? See customers. I remember. I think there was a period of sneaker customization where, for the most part, you'd go with them with your shoe and they'd do it for you. But I think nowadays they have to source the shoe. It's, it's a kind of full, it's kind of a front to, it's kind of a full, full pack service, right? From the beginning to the end, they'll source the shoe for you or get a shoe that's more, you know, that's more applicable to the design that you want and then kind of build it from the ground up. I'm assuming that's what they do. And it's probably the same sort of thing, right? You kind of disassemble it for its components and then you kind of put it together. Because again, in the beginning, there was a period of time where people were just like, they would place the bits of material on top of the actual original material. But I think some of the best sneaker customers, pro sneaker customizer, probably replace the panels right they're full-on cutting and sewing the entire thing which is an insane endeavor to do but again this is why the internet is amazing because you can find these people out there and if you have the funds and you have the time they can make the thing for you um da -da -da -da, blacking it out first they've got to find the watch it's not super easy these days Leroux really explains the watch it would take philippe natulius 5726 with an annual calendar alone costs forty-five thousand dollars 
After LaRue can get his hands on the nearly 50 grand piece, it goes into the Mad Paris workshop where it's completely dissembled. This is the only way to ensure every nook and cranny of the watch is, is uh, voided of color. Those small pieces then use, they need to be washed, polished, brushed, or sandblasted before they're coated. Yeah, that's true, because I remember there was a period in time when I wanted to get a fixy bike, and I remember there was a particular place, I forgot what it was, where they used to do the, they used to be able to, they would, um, they could spray paint or they could paint your frame, right? In whatever color you wanted, right? And it was, you know, the, the obviously the prices were, you know, astronomical, but they could do a really good finish about it for it and the whole entire premise of it. But one of the requirements was that you had to disassemble your bike. And I remember, you know, I was, you know, I'm not the most adept at fixing bikes myself or building them from the ground up. And I, that's, where, that's where I kind of stopped. That was my stumbling block. But I remember that being a big thing. And I remember thinking, well, why, was that, why is that such a big issue? And you just spray paint the bike. It's, you know, same thing I used to do back in the ends. Remember when you used to nick a bike back in the ends and you used to spray paint it orange? Like, we can tell you nicked it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's not hiding the bike. Everyone used to do it back in the day. It's fucking horrible. You buy spray paint from a fucking pound shop, like really blotchy, like shitty things. Like, you know, you don't even stand down the frame. It's just like, you know, it's covered in it's horrible. But then when you saw when somebody actually dissembled their bike and gave it to them and actually sprayed the frame properly, or you went online and you saw how they actually how they actually respray cars properly, like frame something, like, oh, that's why they went to take disassemble it. The finish is impeccable. So I can only imagine how much work it must take to disassemble a watch that doesn't necessarily want to be disassembled, right? They sort of like hide all the nicks, they hide all the all the bits and pieces that kind of allow it to be disassembled so it kind of looks flush, looks like it just came out of the fucking computer, it's assembled. But obviously it hasn't been, but yeah, that looks cool. <laughs> Uh, the fun starts all the fun starts once all the pieces are broken down. They go into a specialized vacuum chamber. The handles of the coating pro handling handles the coating process like an easy bake oven for high end watches. After preheating, a gas is released into the chamber that covers the pieces in watching completely. The process has a very cool name that doubles as a moniker of my favorite future hardcore band, Ionic Pulverization. After the pieces are coated, the watch is put back together again by hand. In special cases, the watches dials is customized with ablo with ablo's watch some mystery still remains of the final step when i asked how the work question marks are made lou simply sends back who knows wow super cool and then i've got the actual guys um instagram here as well we can actually check it out and see what he's doing mad paris workshop but yeah that's that's super cool i think that, that that's what i would do especially if protect philippe came up and I don't know. Imagine if they gifted Virgil Abloh that watch, right? And it was a kind of gift they kind of gave him and said, hey, we think you're cool. We think what you're doing is interesting. Uh, and that's the first thing I would do. I will just get fucking one of those watches and just completely black it out, make it look amazing. Or if, if anything, maybe black it out and have like a nice gold rim or silver rim outside of it. I'll make it super cool. On the actual watch style. Actually, there's one here that's, that looks like it. Um, not this one. Let's put it on the screen. So this is a, what is this one? A deep sea. Wow. Black and green deep sea. That looks fucking beautiful. The dials are green. That that looks incredible. These are awesome. And these are the kind of watches that Rolex are probably not going to make in these sort of colorways, right? They're a little bit too garish for Rolex, I'm assuming. But I'm not sure. I wonder what um, watch enthusiasts watch enthusiasts think of these kind of watches. Do they like them? Is this kind of a spit in the face for the watch community? Do they like, oh, this is like you know selling ourselves out. It's cheapening the product, or do they think it's like you know the ultimate sign of a not even a flex, the ultimate sign of ownership? Because you're not going to resell this, right? Because when you see John Mayer talking about his Rolex watches, he's got loads of vintage uh, watches that he's kind of collected over time. That you know, there's some of them still have the original packaging or receipts and shit, so you can resell that easily. But these you can't probably resell in it. I'd assume it's like. It's like uh, buying a Lamborghini and getting it, getting it, spray painting it, you know, I don't know, a particular color. It's kind of, you know, you're cheapening the value, but you're also confirming to people that you want to keep this car forever. So I'm assuming the same thing with the watches, right? Because not a lot of people would want a black and green Rolex deep sea, would they? I would assume so anyway. Oh, another one. Oh, this is awesome, man. Look at that matte finish. Wow. Customized deep sea, military gray coating, matte finish with a customized dial. That looks beautiful. And then there's this one that I would probably get in this sort of like that. Yeah, that's what this is the one I would get. A customized Miller, what's that? Mil Guas. A customized Rolex Mil Guas, right? Milgus. Milgus. Marble. Micro hand painted. Glossy finish. Look at that. It's got a little electric, got a little thunderstorm thing on the side. Each piece is a unique pattern. That is fucking awesome. I would get that in my That was something I'd get. I wouldn't want a mad custom written on the side of the dial though, but I'd get that. But I don't know. Are people, do people like watches without the dial? I would probably want numbers on it. Like maybe just 12. Maybe just six, three, and nine. I want to have some form of numbers on it. I don't really, I'm not sure if I like the kind of, you know, completely uh, blank, no numbers on it thing. That's weird. That looks more like a jewelry piece. I actually want to tell the time on it. Or just go, just give me the dials. Fuck it. Just give me all the dials on it. 
I don't want anything else. I'm talking about stuff like I'm going to get one. Yeah, I mean, 30 grand, man. I mean, one watch is what I fucking earn in a year. That's insane. <laughs> Isn't it? You put it into perspective here. People are spending a, on a watch what I actually earn in a year. Like, that is nuts. But yeah, um, great little watches from Mad Paris. I recommend you check it out. I'll put the link of the Instagram in the show notes so you guys can see it for yourself. If you're that way inclined, if you're in the mood for some watches.